Lots of reaction to last night's Last Dance, episodes, uh, episodes 9 and 10, as we said, inside headlines. This has been a docuseries uh, that has captivated the world over the last five weeks. T-Bob said, what's he going to do with his Sunday nights now? I am. Yeah. What uh, are you going to do? I have I no mean, idea. This has been your dream. You've been looking forward to this series forever, and now we're on the... We are officially on the other side of it. I was kind of thinking this morning, I'd like to see some some cuts from the floor. I was thinking like in the, in the shower, like kind of like how can I get some more Last Dance material? And I, I was going to tweet at Jason Ayer or some of the team members of the dance, you know, to give them an original idea because I'm sure they haven't heard this <laughs> hey, y'all sh- yet. Hey, y'all should make uh, more. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, give us episodes 11 and 12. Yeah. Jason, because yeah. we want more. Uh, can we look back at the 97 season? But... Now you, you saw you saw the end of it um, last night, and and T one of the things that that jumps out to me that 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 was at the the beginning of the series that is prevalent at the end of the series is that Jerry Krause um, he's a scapegoat he's a scapegoat in this entire thing. Now I, I I'd imagine that he probably did some things to the people that were closest to him, like Jordan Pippen. Uh, and that Bulls team that that probably rubbed some people the wrong way and probably annoyed him and they picked on him and they said some things you know they, they they were harsh to him. Yeah. Um, but when you look at the business side of it and the nuts and bolts of the Chicago Bulls and why why they broke down or why they didn't have an opportunity to come back and play and defend that '98 title, I, I go to Reinsdorf. It's got to be. It's got to be. I mean, Reinsdorf went to Phil Jackson. Um, in, in, in the middle of, of the 97 negotiation when Jerry Krause wanted to blow him up and said, look, we're going to give you a year extension. Don't worry about what Krause is telling you. Here's the deal. Here's the year contract. We're going to get it done. You deserve to come back. And like he said last night, that's a little buried. Like uh, you, you see it if you watch the documentary, but there's not a big deal made of it in Reinsdorf saying he went and saw Phil Jackson and said, look, if you want the opportunity to come back, then you'll you'll have a chance to come back. It was in the first or second episode. And Phil, But last night, after the 98 game. Yeah. You know, I mean, after the 98 championship, he, he did it again. And that's, and then, yeah, and, and that's such a, to me, even the offer at that point is such a slap in the face. Not because everything that, like, Krause had already said or anybody else had said, but to act like, you know what? You earned another year after you just won your six. So what, if he doesn't win the sixth championship in eight years and he hasn't earned another year. Like I just, if, if I was someone who had just poured my soul into that team for a decade and I'd had all that success and then it took the sixth championship for me to earn that other year. Yeah. If I'm Phil Jack, I'm like, nah, man, it's over. I'm out. And to me, it was one simple conversation that Michael Jordan summed up last night when they asked him, was it upsetting that your, your career was ended or were you more pissed off that it happened because you were, you had more games to play? And he said, I was pissed. Yeah. I, I mean, and, and to me, to hear that twenty years later, or however many years later, is is maddening that the owner at the time didn't sit down with the best player on the planet and say, "Okay, look, man, it's just me and you. I'm the owner of the team. You're the best player in the world. What do you want to do? Do you want to play next year? You're not going to play for anybody but Phil. All right, we're going to figure this thing out. We're going to get you back on a one year contract. We'll get Phil back on a one year contract." Let me figure everything else out. Reinsdorf didn't believe in it, though. Like, like he didn't believe in the team that they had assembled. He thought they were too old. I think he thought I, the market value was I think too that's high. Convenient. I think that's convenient at this point to come back and say that. I mean, oh, no. Oh, I mean, I, 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 you don't think that the actions of Reinsdorf at the time would support the idea that that he thought it was over. I, I mean, like he, he, he didn't want to pay the money to those guys. They well, were everything aging I superstars. Read about Reinsdorf is that is that he was cheap. Yeah. He wanted to save money. Yeah. And that's fine if you want to save money, but you still have the nucleus of the championship team telling you that we want in. He just didn't but but that's the thing I think at the end of the day Reinsdorf didn't believe it. You could see when they played that clip of Reinsdorf saying that very thing, right? Saying that uh you know, the guys are too old, the market value would have been too high, it would have been disastrous. To bring those guys back. MJ had never seen that. Remember, he said he never yeah. had any dialogue yeah. with Ryan Zerv. He has always thought it, it sounded to me like someone who had always thought that Kraus was unilaterally making a lot of those decisions. And now MJ's almost having to come to grips with like, oh no, like it was it was it was the other Jerry. It was it, it was Reinsdorf who was really driving this idea and letting Kraus be that lightning rod. My question is, is Reinsdorf on the MJ hit list now that he's seen that clip? Because cause they showed it to him live in the documentary. Yeah. He never seen it before. He seemed upset. And Reinsdorf was a guy that really supported Jordan 
throughout his entire career. I mean, in reading a lot of the the material and reading some of the Jordan books, I mean, yeah, Reinsdorf, something we didn't talk about last week during the baseball parts of the series was that Reinsdorf never broke his salary to Jordan during those two years yeah. while he was playing for the, you know, he's playing double A baseball. He was still playing, paying Making him, like three mil or something. Which is highly underpaid yeah. <laughs> to Jordan, but he's still, you know, I mean, that that's something that Reinsdorf didn't have to do. Yeah. I mean, he didn't have to do that. Um, and he also didn't have to give him a shot to play on his on his white side squad as well. So um, it, it was just it was a great series. I mean, to wrap it up, I mean, it was it was it was an incredible five weeks and an in, an in depth look at one of the greatest teams in team sports history. I mean, the way that they they owned the '90s, they yeah. owned um, you know for my generation, they owned my youth as far as being the the team and the example of what just was everything that was about the culture at that time. I mean, you know, just looking at some of the shoes that Jordan was wearing. I was watching some of the tweets last night where Jamal Crawford tw- tweeted out that uh, Jordan sti- Jordan's wearing shoes that still hadn't been debuted. You know I mean, like <laughs> yeah. he's wearing stuff in the late 90s that you still hadn't seen. Um, so it, it was. I thought it was an incredible series. T. We'll have some more stuff coming up inside of uh, weekend winners. It, it, some it, of the stuff that, that that jumped out, but I couldn't get enough of it. Yeah. Um. In terms of things that I loved, I, I'd forgotten about how good and just how well built those Indiana Pacers teams were back in the day. Also, th- there's a great stat flash yesterday that Jordan eliminated twenty Hall of Famers in the postseason in his career. Like he knocked out twenty guys that later ended up in the Hall of Fame. Reggie Miller felt like the biggest superstar that he ran up against me, in terms of danger. Yeah, Reggie was, it was timed perfectly. Like, Reggie was at the apex of his career at this point of, of Jordan's championship run. So, they, how about when he bodied Jordan to hit that game winner? Yeah. I mean, that was, uh, he, like, like you said, he wasn't scared of him. Jordan's not complaining for a foul. No, no. Which is uh-uh. very, uh, that, that was the most surprising part of that clip was that, I mean, he clearly shoves. <laughs> Jordan coming off of that role and Jordan just kind of looks at the referee and calls a timeout as soon as he nails a shot in front of any, uh, the, the, the other thing that, that I was thought, a great series, the other thing that I thought was great about last night, um, Brian Russell, man, like, okay. So if I had heard pre-series that Brian Russell had talked that trash to MJ, yeah. I'd have been like, that's crazy. Now we know, now that we know MJ better and we know his, insane competitive yeah. drive and how almost like OCD obsessive sociopathic it is. And, and MJ, it even felt like MJ kind of knows at this point, the viewer understood him a little better because when Brian Russell's name, he was like, he was like, listen to, he was like, listen to this, man. Yeah, yeah like y'all ain't, him. y'all ain't going to believe what this dude did. Had to put him on the list. I mean, come on, poor Brian Russell. He's talking, he thinks MJ's retired. He's talking trash to him. Not knowing this would be the man who would come to dominate him. And the thing is, he's a good defender. Like, hearing MJ talk about he was nothing. He plays on his toes. He's a bad defender. But no, remember, it's like Stockton said. He earned that right to guard MJ. Like, he was, in NBA terms, a good defender, just not compared at all to Jordan. But, yeah, you just knew. after Now that we know him a little better, that carried so much weight. And then uh, the Black Jesus comment, I mean, that, that by, by Miller was excellent. But the part that I probably loved and... Man, uh, Ahmad Rashad, big winner in this series. I feel like Ahmad Rashad had kind of, I don't know, over the years just been, uh, I, I felt like public sentiment hadn't turned against him, but it was kind of like, oh, that's just Jordan's boy. But he was, I mean, he seems like a cool cat, dude. When they're sitting there before the game, says, hey, way I see it. Some can, some can't. And just keeping it real with Jordan. Like, not, not. And you can you know, see George's reaction, like, what? Yeah, not he shy. And he doesn't flinch. He doesn't flinch. Some can, some can't. Jordan's kind of ruminating over. He's like, huh, I guess I'll tell Scott Burrell that. So that that's the other thing I want now. I want a last dance reunion, and I want it specifically just so I can see Michael Jordan and Scott Burrell interact again. Because when he's when he's clowning him before the elimination well, game, and he's like, like, he's like, I ain't never gonna see you again. You ain't never gotta la- worry about, about the last me. Sixty seconds for Michael Jordan in a Chicago Bulls uniform. How about the last? He scored six points. Yeah. One enormous steal, yeah, and no timeout brings it down the floor and just buries one. And for the record, he did not push off. I feel that terrible. Was not a push off. Uh, I feel terrible for my guy, for our guy, Carl Malone, good friend of the yeah. show, because you you know that that yeah. little lapse in yeah. 
court awareness just I mean that that's the type of play that just haunts you Classy at night. Classy move by the mailman going on the team bus after the after the championship yeah. to congratulate those guys.